Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Sosis Podcast. Join us for some honest and authentic conversations with your sisters. I'm Amanda. And I'm Cerise. And we are your hosts for today. Hello. So let's check in. First of all, Cerise, how are you doing, darling? Um, I'm okay, you know. I'm good, girl. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know when you try to find things to see if you're actually okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I'm doing well. Um, had a very busy <laughs> weekend, but a fulfilling one. And I'm sure you'll hear more about it um, throughout the episode at some point. But yeah. how are you? How are you doing? Good. I'm fine, you know. I'm tired. I'm tired. In the last Story week. Story of our lives, really. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Do you... Can you, do you sorry, if you ask a mum... Are they not always tired? Is that not the standard response? Yes. Um, but yeah, in the last week, Athena, my little baby, has had her immunizations and then she got her first cold. And so as you can imagine, sleep has been sleep has been a bit of a myth. But um I had a really nice nap before coming onto the podcast right now. So, you know. So you're fresh. I'm right feeling now. all right. You're feeling fresh, yeah. I'm feeling okay. Yeah, I um, had a busy day. But yeah. But um, hey, mm-hmm. out the house anyway. So no naps for me, unfortunately, today. But um, glad you're doing well. Glad you're doing good. Um, but hit me, hit me up with the whatever you got next week. Got random question or win of the week? <laughs> win of the week, Cerise. Come on, you okay, should know okay, the okay. formula by now. I'm joking. True, true, <laughs> so true. Cerise, tell me. I I feel like I can already guess what your win of the week is going to be. You probably. But go do on. Know. Um, What's okay. the win of the week? So win of the week for me this week was well, I can say probably over the weekend. Well, it's you know it's all part of the week. Um, mm-hmm. I blessed my baby. I blessed my baby girl. Yeah, Sunday. Yay! She is blessed by the Lord now. But um, yes, I blessed her on the weekend, and that was a that was it was it was honestly i don't even know why i paused there it was great it was fantastic um had a really good time all my loved ones were there and everything um and it was kind of my first rodeo where i had done something properly so mm-hmm. if you guys have listened to our first episode you will know that we are both into organizing things and organization so because of that that simply means that whenever something comes up for us and you know personally we're going to go mad in terms of trying to organize it so um i organized this blessing from start to finish in probably about two weeks call it two weeks um Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to start something on my own like a kind of um event management and decor event design sort of small business um sly plug there i won't tell you the name yet um or should i lavishly put is the name yeah plug it plug it lavishly put is the name so if you we'll put it in the description box in the show notes yes we will thank you very much um but i'm trying to start my own thing so that was my first time putting on something and designing the decor and everything from start to finish so loads of deliveries the week before because obviously i have nothing and i'm just starting out so that was my win of the week i managed to accomplish something and it was really good and i was really really happy with it um so yeah Yeah, and guys i'm Oh, I'm so on. sad because I wasn't able to make it because the date had yeah. to change, didn't it? Yes, and um, change, it was yeah. one of our families, like it was a baby in our family's blessing as well, the same day. And I couldn't see that. I couldn't be in two places in the c- country at the same time. <laughs> um, so I missed it. But the pictures are beautiful and your girl can sing. Cerise sang and it was beautiful. It's and the room good. just looks amazing. Thank you sent you. me all the pictures and I was very impressed. So Let yeah, guys, guys. lavishly put it. Make sure you follow. Um, but yeah, so that, that's a great one of the week. I'm actually trying to think what my one of the week is. Um, it's been one of those I'm weeks sure. where I was like, I know what you mean, what but I'm happened? sure you can find that's the whole point of this, guys, is that we yeah, want yeah, to bring is. out the positive in your week. Um, even if you have to think for a little bit, that's fine. We want you yeah. to be able to extract the positive moments and your wins. So yeah. Go ahead, Amanda. Okay, I'm going to go with... (laughs) Okay, my win of the week. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with being consistent about self-care. So I haven't been able to um, do all the things. I made like a little list of things that I ideally want to do for self-care each week because right now I've got loads of things on my plate, lots of moving parts. I've got exams to revise for, like holidays to get ready for, conferences, applications. I've got so much going on, plus looking after my two little girls whilst on maternity leave. I know, right? Um, 
Yeah, so it's sometimes more than your full time job being on that leave. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like my full time jobs helps clear my diary because I'm at work that day. So yeah, there's nothing I can do it. apart from work. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, because of that, I've been really busy, feeling a little bit overwhelmed sometimes. So I've tried to make a list of all the things I want to do for self care, and although I haven't like done all of the things, I actually feel like I've been in prioritizing them. Okay. Um, and last week, I started going to some family fitness classes. So at my local gym, um, one of the personal trainers there, she had a she had a child about just over a year ago Mm -hmm. and she realized that it's really hard to work out when you've got kids and so she's done a class where on a Tuesday and a Friday you can come you can bring your babies along while your kids up to the age of five and so on Tuesday I went with just Athena because Isabella's at nursery Mm -hmm. and they have like lights on and so Athena was just like staring at the lights the whole time and had it you know she was absolutely fine we did like a proper high intent you know hit workout um circuit yeah and then on friday i brought isabella with me and i've gone again today so um yeah round of applause for amanda working is, out i can't really forgot is, about that no, honestly <laughs> you know, like, I'm talking, I'd love that. i completely forgot i'd love that i feel like it's something that i should perhaps try and find something similar um working yeah because i know there's like carry fit where you can work out with like the children on you and stuff but okay. hopefully have a look in your area guys because i had no idea this was there and actually the instructor is my neighbor like how random but basically one of my other neighbors told me about it and so look around your local gym might do something like that because it's a game changer oh you know to take the kids along it was yeah Yeah, brilliant that that is a really good um, idea really really good idea guys so yeah look around see what's mm -hmm. out there Um, and if you don't have it your local ledger center yeah your local ledger center maybe do like a little suggestion box because i'm like it doesn't look like it's not very hard to set up she literally just puts like um, mats in the middle with with soft play on and like baby toys and the babies get dumped there and, and the crawlers around. crawl around to their mom yeah the, the walkers walk around and if like your baby's not settled you can leave them in the pram and just push them around with you or you go around the circuit wow or you can hold them like it's it's a great little class but yeah that's yeah. my one of the week well well done well done um yeah, honestly, I feel like I need to look for something like that because it would help a lot. I mean, I have been fairly consistent with my exercise because um, I've also mm-hmm. got a holiday coming up. But I need to, you know, it's nice to get out of the house and do exercise with others as well. Um, and have someone actually physically yeah. instructing me, not just watching a video, you know, or doing trying to yeah, yeah. paper or something. So, yeah, mm-hmm. great. Proud of you, girl. Proud yeah, I find that I work harder when other people are like watching. in class. Yeah, yeah, I push <laughs> yeah. myself push myself more yeah um so that was good um but yeah guys i i just realized i forgot to tell you what today's episode is actually about <laughs> um oh, today's well, episode is this... called finding oh yeah yourself. sorry about that guys but yeah it's called finding <laughs> yourself or so who am i mm-hmm. um and we're going to be talking about self-discovery identity and all of that and we're about to get into the meat of the episode but first I always like to ask a bit of a random question to get your brains working Mm -hmm. and this week's random question is it's about money this week okay Mm. so let's see I'm going to give you a random figure and I want you to tell me what you would do with that money and so um often when you get asked these questions it's like two million pounds three million pounds what would you do but actually i'm going to give you not a life changing sum of money but okay. something that's significant so i'm going to say if you get five thousand pounds if you found it today tax-free so you found it on the street you took it to the police station they yeah. said to you you keep, keep this money what are you going to do with five thousand pounds today oh Good question. You know what? You threw me a curveball there when you said you're not going to give me a significant figure. Because, you know, everyone's yeah, not life-changing. Yeah, £5, like, pounds, pounds, going to say... £5,000, pounds, you still mortgage. got to go to work. Yeah, all of that. Nah. <laughs> okay. Well, I've still got to go to work. Um, let me think about this carefully because it's a bit difficult. Just, I mean, I would love to say just go on holiday, but I feel like that would be a bit irresponsible to do with five grand. I, I think well, I've got to remember. Some of it. Yeah, go on. Mm-hmm. You gotta remember, it's only five thousand pounds. That's what I'm so saying. Whatever like, you do, it's not gonna be like fully, fully life changing. Um, but yeah, have I think, think Mister Reese. I think I would use perhaps some of it to do a nice little holiday. Honestly, like mm-hmm. when you get a lump sum of money, you just think break. So I think I would have a little bit of a break using some of the money. Now I'm not gonna say how much because I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. With the other money, 
well, another part of the see, I was basically I'll split it up. The other part of the mm-hmm. money, I would put some money in my children's accounts. So mm-hmm. definitely put some money away for them, and that would hopefully grow. And oh, with the other bit of the money, I think what I do is a bit of self care. I didn't make okay, so let's say if I split it five ways. So oh, okay, so maybe two grand on a holiday. A nice holiday. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be far, just a nice holiday. Maybe another two, you know, one for one child and one for the other, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then the last one, I think I would spend it on a bit of self care. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, get some liposuction. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> no. um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, who knows. Um, some sort of weight loss, something, something. Um, and also probably like teeth whitening or something like that. Um, maybe even start me some sister locks. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I just yes, think hair is fly. But, um, that's the thing. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But I think definitely some self care. But a yeah. grand on self care. Yeah. And I think, so we're we not mm-hmm. supposed to share this with our husbands, right? This is our money, right? This is our five grand. It's your five grand to do okay. what you want to, to, want to do go. with it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There you go. And okay, of course, guys, brilliant. we want to know what you think as well. So. Yes. So this is going to be a little question box on our stories on Instagram. So make sure you're following over there. So.sis.podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and okay, for myself, I think £5,000. I think I, mm, there's like the two options of like being really responsible with it and like I know, I know. putting it into savings. Like I'm on maternity leave, so I just use it for that. But no, I'm going to be irresponsible. And I'm going to Go use part of it for a holiday. I was actually talking to my friend today. She came and did the class with me and she went to Italy and she's like, Amanda, we are sleeping on Europe. She went to um, Puglia in Italy and she was also oh, yeah. talking about Sardinia and the beaches there are like the Maldives, but it's Europe. It's not as long a flight. It's much cheaper. And I would get myself a holiday over to Sardinia because I've heard of Sardinia. And it's supposed I've to be really so child friendly. Yeah, so it's really child friendly because Italians, they have that siesta in the day and then there's so many children activities. They love kids. There's like, she was saying that the kids were coming out of the house at midnight. She's like, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. But um, yeah, so I would definitely have a holiday. Always a holiday. Yeah, I always. Then, like, I, d- I didn't expect you to say anything else. I was like, she's going to say Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, but not a really expensive holiday, not the whole five grand. And then I think I would like to put like a little fund together for like ongoing self-care. I like your self-care idea. So I think I don't get my nails done regularly. I don't have massages like regular. Yeah, massages and definitely. so I think I'd like to have like a massage once a month and put like a little fund together so I could yeah. do that all year. Um, facial, you know, like have a self-care fund and then a wardrobe fund as well. Listen, my body has changed a lot. I've had two kids in the last three years. You're telling me. And I need to I need to update my wardrobe. Yeah. Because it's been a while. And so maybe a grand or two on some new clothes. Okay. That's what I would do. There we go. There we go. There Um, we have it. Like I said, share share it with us. Share what your answer would be. Yeah, we want probably something better than ours. More responsible. Uh, To be honest, like (laughs) there are no limits. There are no limits, no right and wrong answers. We just want to hear what you guys think because Yeah. Honestly, in this life, in the current crisis that we're in with this whole cost of living crisis, having a bit of money, a lot of people are going to say, well, I'll pay off this or I'll pay off that. But, you know, maybe mm-hmm. let's maybe let's act like life isn't so hard. <laughs> and try yeah, and exactly. All if the I've got some things. random money. Yeah. Exactly. Now, if I got five hundred thousand pounds, yeah, I'll pay off my mortgage. I'll pay oh, off yeah, like, everything. I'll put like some you know, amazing savings aside, but I've got five thousand pounds. I'm still gonna have to keep working. Yeah. So, you know, let's do some fun. Have with a little it. bit of fun with it, basically. <laughs> yeah. But it. let's get in to the meat of the episode. Yes. So, Cerise, who are you? That is the title. And I'm gonna give you a bit of a background as to why we actually picked this topic, finding yourself. Um so we've we finished off our twenties or we are finishing off our twenties. So me. I turned finishing. thirty. <laughs> yeah you're finishing and I've finished um so I'm 30 Cerise you're 29 and when people talk about their 20s they say that your 20s are the time for building foundations for 
adventure and exploring and finding all of that yeah self-discovery find out who you are right Mm -hmm. and so we're 30 we're hitting 30 shouldn't we know who we are then by now here's the thing here is the thing that is an interesting question i don't believe that there is ever a point at which we arrive now that might be mean that we just end the episode here but we're not going to do that because there's just so much to explore (laughs) but i don't ever think that there is a time in life when we say we've arrived we fully know ourselves for a number of reasons and i guess we'll explore the reasons um further down in the episode but um yeah i I don't think there's ever time that we arrive so do i know myself now yes i know myself a lot more than i did perhaps 10 years ago when I was just starting my 20s. Oh, that sounds so long. Um, <laughs> but I don't know myself fully yet. So what do you think? Would, would you say that you know yourself now? No, so I, I think another reason why I really wanted to do this episode too is because sometimes you think like, I guess we have to define what it means to know yourself or to Uh find yourself. Because sometimes for me, I find that the different roles that I do can sometimes start to crouch into the identity of myself as an individual. So like my role, my role as a wife, a mom, a doctor, a daughter, like those kind of things can sometimes crowd, although they're part of who I am, they're not, they're not me. They don't just define me. And so sometimes sometimes those different roles can start to feel like they are defining me and so it has if sometimes like especially when you bring in a new thing like a new a new child like my daughter's four months finding yourself again yes in amongst that can be difficult and so I feel like I'm like you said it's a constant journey for me as well and I think like even if I did know myself um 10 years ago I'm not that same person now no and I'm sure in 10 years from now perhaps you thought you knew yourself back then um yeah. but obviously like you said things change um circumstances yeah. evolve so so do you in a way mm-hmm. you know and like i don't i don't know 40 year old amanda i don't know 50 year old amanda wow um i never thought do you know that. what i mean yeah i don't know that person but 30 year old amanda i feel like i need to spend a bit more time discovering who i am because i'm getting lost a little bit in the roles i'll be honest yeah, I mean, I can, I completely hear you. It's it's all about finding who you are when all of that is stripped away. Like, okay, yeah. we're not trying to say strip it away because we don't want to lose any of those things. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying is who who are you? Who as an individual beneath those different cloaks, beneath those different roles? Um, personally, obviously, I'm a mum, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. Um, not quite an auntie yet, but I'm I'm sure that will come in the future. Gabrielle um <laughs> so you know yeah so many different roles I'm a friend um I'm a cousin we can all name the different mm-hmm. things that we are and I guess we all change how we interact changes according to whatever role we're playing at any point in time but um I think finding fi- finding myself beneath all of that is I actually find it quite interesting and exhilarating mm-hmm. like so it's and I think a uh, I think being by yourself on your own sometimes just in quiet time has a lot to do with finding who you are like there are certain situations that you know life can just happen and just take over and sometimes you just don't have time to sit with you sit with yourself like take Mm -hmm. yourself out to dinner take yourself to the movies I don't know have a night in you know write a journal like basically things that are just 100% you looking after yourself and finding who you are um you know, like who I was at 20 years old, much like yourself, is a lot different to how I am now because there's mm-hmm. so many different things have happened. And I think in your 20s as well, so many different life changes happen. You go to university, you graduate, um, you're in and out of relationships, you may or may not get married, you may or may not have children. It's kind of that kind of decade, you know, yeah. when all those different things happen. I'm not saying that's the mm-hmm. right decade for things to happen. Obviously, like once, whenever you're ready in life, you know, everyone has different um timelines personally and that's what's mm-hmm. best for them and that's what's what you know i guess what god has placed for them in their life but um yeah 20s is definitely a period of discovery um yeah but beneath all of that is moving all of those roles is kind of hard sometimes and yeah you're right you do get lost yeah that's things so like to me finding yourself i think it means like knowing what makes you tick knowing what you enjoy yeah. knowing what things um kind of recharge you knowing what your 
underlying like morals and values and you know knowing knowing that about yourself and not getting it mixed into what other people are I think um like you said everyone's got different timelines and your timeline was being quite similar to mine in that I have been in the same relationship with my husband since I was 19 years old I have been I was a bit younger, um, pursuing but... the career of like becoming a doctor since the age of 18 I've been like in medical school and so a lot of those things kind of define me so like I would find myself like you said about spending time by yourself I wasn't always spending time by myself like I had a long-term partner from a very early age and even though we did lots of fun things together sometimes you're like is this something that I enjoy or is it something yeah. that we do together is this more of Raf's interest is it mine yeah. um and then there's the whole thing of like I started being quite known for oh Amanda she's the medical student she's the doctor she and that's only yeah, such course. a small part of me yeah. but it would start to be what people knew me of and like so I'd be out somewhere also I'm meeting somebody and they would ask the question you know what do you do and I say oh I'm a doctor I'm a medical student and suddenly the whole conversation goes would towards change. that yeah 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 and yeah. it's like actually I've got more things to talk about more interests outside of just my work mm-hmm. um and so I think those things kind of swallowed and then you become a mom and when you're a mom like your time yeah, you can't... <laughs> especially in those early days your time is just so much given to your child and yeah. your interest like when I plan a day now often if my children now I'm not usually thinking about what would I like to enjoy today do today and enjoy yeah you, you think I'm thinking, about occupying what or entertaining them like? yeah exactly exactly yeah. yeah. And so knowing what makes you tick when all those things are happening, you've got to be really intentional about it. Yeah. And I think um, having that where you feel like you're kind of losing yourself, like, you know, what does make like, am I just the cleaner and the cook? Like, do I really love cooking or do I just have to cook all the it's time just, for these yeah, children? Yeah. Do I love do cleaning? I mean? Obviously, I love cleaning, guys. Like, I'm not going to say I don't love cleaning because I do love cleaning. Um, no, <laughs> actually, I do love cleaning. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. We just do things mm-hmm. because they are necessary as to as opposed to doing them because we actually enjoy them um yeah. which is why i said you know you need to spend time with yourself because once you spend time with yourself mm-hmm. you get to know your likes and dislikes things that make exactly. you tick things that make you happy things that make you you know that are exhilarating for you as an individual mm-hmm. and i must confess um we've just you know we're still sort of at the tail end of the pandemic and i guess it's some you know you see you, the different facets to an individual you have like the the physical, the mental, the emotional, the social, the spiritual, um, other lots of different facets. And I guess within those are sort of subdivisions of different facets. But um, spiritually, and I think relationally too, like I have changed so much in the past mm-hmm. two years where are we now feel like it's yeah two oh my gosh two and a half years of this pandemic um because circumstances have changed and you've i've been forced mm-hmm. to find myself because we've we've been forced to spend a lot of time with ourselves because we haven't yeah, been able to interact definitely. so much and um i would say if i were to ever pick a time in my 20s in the last 10 years or i guess the self-discovery phase that was the most intense it would be this part and mm-hmm. that's why i love this episode because it is hitting home so many parts for me personally because it's just like okay well yeah finding myself I never really thought about finding myself before but now I am finding myself and it's such a beautiful journey like not having to think oh what does what does so-and-so think or whatever you just you know at peace with yourself because you know who you are and what you like and you don't have to answer to anybody about that you know Mm -hmm. that that for me is 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 so important um, and it is important for anybody who's trying to find themselves guys if you are on yeah. that journey of self-discovery um, i'm not saying being a rebel is necessary or I'm not saying be a rebel but what I, i'm saying is spend time with yourself on your own um it's almost from like a being like a conscious like a conscious childhood stage you know trying yeah. this trying that obviously all good things never anything harmful never anything bad but all good things and just try different things and have different experiences go to different places eat at different restaurants um think about doing something fun that you haven't done before you know that's obviously safe and everything and see what you like see if you enjoy yeah. it see if it's something that you're in, you're into doing or whatever um and then that's how you discover you yourself that's how you find yourself as an individual i mm-hmm. think it's so important to have that foundation because otherwise without that foundation oh, the circumstances and the things of life will just batter you yeah you exactly no, and the thing you're is, not grounded you know mm-hmm. that's the thing. and i think um 
being able to discover who you are and what makes you tick because if you don't know yourself you don't know what fuels you what drives you if you haven't spent that time that kind of inward looking and if you don't know that it's really hard for you to recharge yourself and right. to be the best version of yourself that you can be it's really hard to ha- to like yourself and to have self self confidence mm. and high self esteem yep. when you don't know yourself yep. Yep. often you can kind of get lost in like what other people's perceptions might be or comparing yourself to others because you don't really know who you are yourself yeah. um and that's why it's so important to do that i think sometimes people can also get self dis- um like finding yourself and your identity confused with your purpose as well i think sometimes the quest for like what your purpose in this life is or what you know what thing you've been set out to do um I see a lot of people like on the quest to find their purpose and sometimes they can get their identity lost in that. They are quite similar, but I think, I think your identity is more about your, is something that will keep evolving, but it's something you need to know all the time. You need to know who you are. Um, And where's your purpose? I feel like often people get to the end of their life and like, okay, looking back, I think I know what it was, but you don't want to get to the end of your life and look back and be like, who was I? Um, I think it's something that's really important to actually spend time figuring out now and what I think is amazing um I don't know if it is because what you were saying about um the last few years being really um pivotal for you yeah and kind of like stripping away your opinions you know trying to please other people and everything I don't know if that's come because I've turned 30 because of the pandemic you just, you just earned the right the to say mom. whatever you want <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like all those things that happen at the same time, like, yeah, like all these transitions that I don't know really what the catalyst has been, but um, it's quite liberating. And I'm actually finding myself um, liking myself more. I think when I was younger in my, uh, in my teens and my twenties, I think because I had, um, I was always trying to like keep up with things um, and comparing myself. Mm -hmm. It felt like at times I didn't like myself that much, but getting to know yourself, you'll find that you are a likable person. um, And I'm sure that it will be the case for everybody. Um, And that really helps with self-esteem. That really helps with mental health as well, keeping that mental well-being there too. Um, And then being able to serve other people, serve your children, serve your family as well. Exactly. You can be your Um, best self. You can be your best self for your family. You know, those that are important to you. Can I just say, Mm -hmm. you know, I saw something on, was it Instagram? or Facebook or some, I can't remember, one of those social media um, platforms. And it was talking about the fact that, um, and you mentioned it actually just now, you alluded to it. We spend so much time thinking, thinking that other people are th- are thinking about us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But they're not. Like, we spend so much time obsessing and being like, oh my days, I wonder what that person's thinking of me. I can't stand this. Um, and then you, we end up adjusting and try, you know, trying to be our best self and, and trying to please that person or individual, whoever is in our presence at that point in time, mm-hmm. whether it's virtually or physically. But they're not thinking about us at all. Like they're just doing mm. their thing. Like, and I think that once we get out of our own heads with that kind of nonsense of, oh my gosh, I'm constantly being watched on my days, my every move is being critiqued. Like, mm-hmm. of course, like you said, like when you turn a certain age, you almost earn the right to just be like, I don't have to answer you. Yeah. Like I'm comfortable with who I am. I know who I am. I am me. Mm-hmm. Like these are my morals. This is these are my levels. This is what I'm like you don't have to answer to anybody. Nobody, guys, trust me when I say, and I can say this in personal experience because I've I wouldn't say I've struggled with self esteem, but I've had, you know, my run ins like every now and then. And I think that's normal for everybody. You do have a bit mm-hmm. of a um tug of war with your self esteem sometimes. But guys, trust me when I say everybody is too busy and i know this sounds really bad everybody is too busy to be thinking about you all the time okay if they see mm-hmm. you they see you they're like hi and bye and that's it no one's got time for you to for you know to occupy their brain with you all the time um not even mm-hmm. your not even your spouse is thinking about you 24 7 and da, 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 da. Yeah. you know guys be comfortable in your own skin be happy with who you are as an individual, you know, make mm-hmm. sure that you spend time with yourself and that you don't feel like you have to apologize every five seconds yeah. because that's a toxic trait, having to feel like you have to apologize for who you are um, and even mm-hmm. apologize for finding yourself. Like sometimes finding yourself can look a bit messy, mm-hmm. to be honest. Sometimes finding yourself as an individual isn't so straightforward, isn't linear. It doesn't look nice and pretty to say, I'm going to spend this time away. I'm going to go away and I'm going to have a little time finding myself, guys, and I'll be back and I'll know exactly who I am. No, sometimes it's up and down. 
you know, yeah, sometimes it's not it's linear. And out all over mm. the place. Sometimes people close to you will look at you and you'll be like, mm, so and so is kind of going through it right now. But, you know, that's all part of the process. As long as you, I guess, keep a good support network whilst you're sort of on this self discovery journey, I think you'll be good. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Um, so, watching my toddler like go through, you know, life and she's growing up and learning what she likes and what she doesn't like. When you're two years old, so Isabella's mm-hmm. two, she'll be three in a few months. When you're two year old, two years old, you are the center of your world. You are very selfish. You are very self centered, but it's part of your development. It's what you need to do. And she is really finding this, you know, her identity, herself. She's learning, she's very, um, what's the word headstrong about like yeah. what she wants what she doesn't want she's as two year olds me... often are yeah she's like I don't want to do this I do want to do this let me do it myself because she's learning and so like watching her it's amazing examples you can get from your children like watching Listen. her and the way that she's Listen. so unapologetically I was gonna um, say that says what she needs says what she needs says what she doesn't like you know is so vocal about who she is and she's yeah. so open to learning it's actually quite a lesson to me. I'm not uh-huh. going to do it like a two-year-old. I'm not going to do it with the tantrums and things. Thrash around. That's, yeah. <laughs> but that kind of like um, having yourself as a priority, maybe not the centre, you know. Um, not self-centred. That's not what we're trying to not say. Not being right. self-centred, not not quite the full two-year-old, but like having a bit of that child childlikeness yes. um, when you're trying to discover yourself yep. is really important. Um, yeah. And having a bit of selfishness. I think as um, as women, especially as black women, you are automatically the caregiver. You're automatically told that you're so strong, you're so resilient, that you can carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. But actually so. there's a softness to us. And because it's We're so not tough, ingrained, tough, like hard. Yeah. Exactly. And because it's so ingrained, this like narrative of what a woman and what a black woman should be, I think it's important to be selfish because we're so automatically not. And especially as you take on those roles of wife and mom and everything, um, actually taking some time to be selfish because ultimately being selfish and looking after yourself will actually help everybody else as well. But getting to terms with that, that selfishness that has to be, has to happen can be a bit difficult sometimes. Yeah. But um, Cerise, I wanted to ask you though. Okay. So with all that said, we spoke a bit about like, you know, identity, where to find it. And actually, let me just share with you, we did put on our stories asking for people to um, tell us what they think identity is. And someone shared something I thought was quite nice. They said they think it's your culture, your colour, your background, your morals, your education, your sexuality. And so they've kind of just described what makes up you. But I think I would also add to that as well, what makes you tick, what makes you run, what makes you um, be able to be yourself. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, Cerise, right now, okay. we're on this journey of self how would you describe yourself? What is your identity? What makes Cerise Cerise? What makes you run? What oh, makes wow. you tick? You know what, like, <laughs> when you said that, when you asked, started to ask questions, I thought, oh, sugar, this is going to be, wow, a long day. But I mean, <laughs> I would say... Okay, let's start with the obvious things physically. I'm a woman. Um, I'm going to get all those out of the way and I guess get to the deeper stuff. I'm a woman. I'm black. Um, I'm from a Caribbean background. I'm British though, British born. Um, I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm a sister. I'm a daughter. I'm a Christian, which is a huge part of who I am. Um... Now, I guess you go to what you like, I guess. I mean, guys, mm-hmm. we've, we've done this whole episode of who we are already, so we're not really going to take too much time doing that. But yeah. I guess who, but what who I makes am. You, what, yeah, what makes you you? What makes you tick? What charges you, recharges you? Honestly, like, I am very, very family oriented. Mm-hmm. Um, like things like the blessing that I had on Sunday, that like really boosted me because... I had all my, you know, my close friends and family around me. That was really nice. And that kind of thing really boosts me as an individual. If that was to be taken away or change dramatically for any reason, that would stress me out. Like that would really stress me out. Another thing I must say that really reaches me like, oh, my days, wow, reaches me is music. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are going to say the same thing. Yeah, music, music. Yeah, I love music. Yeah, it reaches me. But guys, you don't understand. Like... 
I can be having the worst day and the worst week, like the worst. And I listen to a piece of music or I just listen to music in general and I just feel boosted. Mm -hmm. um, singing again. Um, and yeah, so that, those are the kinds of, I think music is probably near the top of the list, but family and music mm -hmm. are really, really, really who I am as an individual, like what makes me tick. Another thing I don't like, okay, so here's some little tidbits. Um, I don't like small talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't like um, pretending. Like I can't pretend. I don't know how to pretend. Um, I can be a bit forthright sometimes. Um, not in necessarily the greatest of ways. But guys, we're being honest here. Um, yeah. So I'm very like sometimes very blunt, um, very brutally honest mm -hmm. with people. Um, so yes, I don't like dishonesty. I don't like fake behavior um like i said small talk is hard work for me um i don't like mess I don't like things all over the place i like to be super super organized those are the things, mm -hmm. that, kind of things that i don't know if i was giving you a picture of me oh and i love a bit of glam oh yes like if mm -hmm. i'm going out anywhere i've got to look the part like and i'm not saying i have to look the best but i like to i love to dress up i love to yeah. self-indulge fix up my face fix up my hair you know put my bits on you know put nice clothes i, I like to self-indulge and i think i got that from my mum. Mm -hmm. always trying to turn out the best like i don't like i'm not really playing jane that's not really me mm -hmm. um but yeah those kind of things that get me going music glam all of that sounds like i should be a celebrity right no um, <laughs> but there you go that's like um like you said you said at the beginning like do you know yourself but you do like you know your likes your dislikes and yes it's a constant discovery it is but there you are new things actually that i'm discovering mm -hmm. that i like new things which i guess maybe over time you'll get to know guys but what about you amanda what would you say who are you like what's your identity okay so if, aside from my many roles um i think it's interesting what you've just said because some of the things that make you tick um i had in my 20s, my early 20s, my late teens and things, I wanted to do those things to um, try to fit in. And that wasn't who I am. So I am not somebody that, I'm not a musical person. Like I have so many people, my family and my friends that were just like so into music and, you know, listening to the latest things and needing music all the time. Actually, I'm someone that really recharges in the silence. If I'm wow. having a bad day, putting some music on and things, it, just it doesn't do it for me. No. It doesn't do it for me. Like I, I enjoy music. Um to a certain extent, but it's not something that makes me tick. Um, it's like, I will be in the car and I'll turn the radio, if I'm, got, if I'm getting like too much in my head or whatever, just turn I off. will turn the music off and I can go days with like my car being silent until someone else gets in there. I'm like, where's the music? music? On. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, Amanda, it's just, you, hit an, mm -hmm. you hit a nerve there. Um, you hit a good point there because you spend so much, you spent so much time trying to fit in with people. And that's, I guess, mm -hmm. guys, if you know us, um, if you know us like personally in our background, you'll get that because I guess from a church perspective yeah. um, and culturally as well, like music is a big part of who we are as a church. Mm -hmm. in our and faith. it's a big part. Yeah. It's a big part of our culture. It's a big part yeah. of like my husband, my dad, like they're really into their music and things. So my best friends. But for me, I appreciate music and I enjoy it at the right time, but it's not something that makes me tick. And like, uh -huh. I'm all right to admit and that. And that's cool. That's cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah. And I like to look put together, but also I'm not someone that's really into like um, makeup and glamour like that. I like to look good. I like to make sure I'm more put together. And I think before I used to really try and like push myself to do that stuff, but I don't enjoy it. Like it's not, I, I'm not the kind of person I don't want to sit and play around in makeup. I don't like, Yeah, I, I you won't see me ever with, yeah, I'm kind mm -hmm. of similar. I mean, I mean, I know I'm contradicting myself and I'm cutting you, but yeah, I'm kind of similar. I, I don't watch makeup tutorials, guys. I don't sit there hours watching. I don't sit there trying to get the latest foundation. None of that. I'll stick with my staples and still look good. So there yeah, go. yeah. And so those things like that I try to do before to fit in, they're just not me. For me, I enjoy challenging conversation. I found myself like since the world of podcasts, <laughs> hence this one here, hey, and hey, audio hey, books, hey. that that's what I want. Like those are things that I really enjoying enjoy doing. I like being challenged. I like debating. Um I like having things that really spark like me to kind of like grapple with a new idea. That's what I'm really into. I like I love to travel. 
yeah I absolutely love to travel it's something yeah. that is so so important to me and like I will make sacrifices in other areas to make sure that I get away mm-hmm. um there's only ever like in my adult life there's been one year where I didn't travel and I said I'm never doing that again um because it really does just that new adventure it reaches um, your soul. it reaches the it really the does it really does <laughs> Um, I love to cook, but only, but when I've got enough time, I don't like, um, rush cooking. I don't want to do it every day. I don't like rush cooking or anything like that. I like to take my time with it. Um, I really enjoy, um, like my family really recharges me. I only lived in Leeds before now, um, for like seven years I was up there. That's where, where I was when I got married. We lived there for two years after we got married as well. And that's only like, I don't know, two hours away, but it was too far. Um, I need to be with my family and I don't mean like really like extended family and everything yeah, I, I agree. Um, immediate yeah my, my immediate family like my parents my grandparents they're so important to me and my culture like I love sitting down with my grandparents and hearing about the stories yes, um same. Uh, those those things are really really recharge me um and I like to be busy if I'm honest, um, I think sometimes okay. being busy for some people makes them um, feel overwhelmed and less productive. I don't like to be too busy and I have burnt out before, but I don't like, I find it really difficult just to be doing nothing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I find, I, it, I find it difficult. Yeah. Like maternity leave, if maternity leave was just like me and my baby, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd find, I, I would be, I would be, I've got to admit that I like to have different projects. I like to have passion projects. Like right now I've got this podcast, I've got a YouTube channel. I'm like the director of events for the, another organization. I'm doing courses and there's a lot going on, but it makes me feel good when I'm doing things. Yeah. And so I guess busyness does, um, Kind that re- that of recharges you in a strange way. Yeah, I like like that productivity. Like yeah. sometimes self care for me is ticking things off my list. Yeah, you just feel accomplished. You feel like yes. Yeah, I've done yeah. it. Yeah, and I am I'm done and I'm it. an early bird. I need like I'm not a le- I'm not a night owl. Um, yeah, that was something as well. Sometimes <laughs> pretend <laughs> I used to pretend that I was. Oh, um, of course, yeah, it's funny. Even though my body really wouldn't let me. But I'm not a night owl. I like early mornings. I get up at the crack of dawn. Even before I had kids, I wake up super early. And I like that stillness in the morning. Because yeah, I I'm do so like busy, that too. I do like that, that too. Stillness is really nice. And so I think those are some of the things that kind of keep me going. Um, and also, I really, really, really need to have daily time with God. I think everyone needs it. I think even oh, yeah. if you admit, don't admit that you need it, you do. Because um, I've had times where it's dipped off in the last couple of years I've had a lot of times anxiety and things and when I'm feeling very anxious or very low I find it difficult sometimes to actually get on my knees and pray um and so I'm so grateful for the people around me that I pray during those times but like whenever I start having that intentional time with God again I start finding myself again yeah and um, that's so important that mm-hmm. so i think did i say that earlier about spirituality yeah i did i think i mentioned you said that. yeah christianity so yes uh, my spirituality um i've been finding that a lot more in the pandemic because i guess when you have church that's just been removed when you that you rely on a whole lot like you're almost forced to find your own level of spirituality and find god in your you know by yourself and have that relationship with god it's now your mm-hmm. fully your responsibility but i agree with that like it kind of brings you back to a place of equilibrium what well, it does yeah not, not kind of it does um mm-hmm. guys if you are um people of if you're a person of faith if you believe in god um like we do here like you will understand and if you don't believe in god it's something to explore but definitely you know brings me back to who i am as an individual who god says i am um Mm -hmm. which gives me that confidence oh hitting the mic which fills me with that confidence um to go out and be who he says i am um Mm -hmm. i do feel like sometimes self can get in the way so much like individual our own thoughts can kind of tie us up and hold us hostage um but then god sets us free with that you know like having that relationship with him at that time with him definitely sets us free and I think that's kind of tied into my music as well because I listen to a lot of gospel music and that's what mm-hmm. makes me feel so recharged a lot of the time. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, God is just like, yeah. Uh, it's a whole thing, like, for both of us mm-hmm. guys. Like, you will hear, I guess, throughout our podcast episodes um, how we feel, how our, what our spirituality is like and how important it is to us. But yeah, mm-hmm. finding ourselves, finding God helped me find myself yeah absolutely because god tells you like who you are like 
the worth that you have yeah um and that's a great place to start yeah. and that's the thing so like um I was good so that's something that we've both done to help find ourselves that having that spiritual life yeah um but I think before we kind of leave and kind of end off the episode I thought it'd be nice to actually talk about some of the things and you've alluded to a lot of things actually that you can do and our listeners can do to help them find themselves mm-hmm. um so yes having quiet time um and alone time yeah some people might say mindfulness meditation but I really mean like devotional time with God like in prayer I think that really helps reading his word really helps um what's some other things that you would say have helped you in your journeys to find yourself I think having somebody to bounce off you know because we're very subjective obviously like what we see in the mirror is what we think and it's all subjective having um obviously being married and you know my husband Daryl like he helps me he helps me find who I am as an individual because he'll look at mm-hmm. it from the outside and be like oh you really like this or you really like that or you're really good at this you should explore it and I'd be like mm, really like even this whole little business thing that I'm trying to start um yeah it was him that kind of pushed me to do it because me I'm just like mm-hmm. oh I know I might be good at it but I just want you know when they say I just want to date for fun but you know you really should probably explore it more um yeah he has helped me find myself a lot more he has given me confidence as well um mm-hmm. to just be me you know and I sometimes I remind myself girl you are a whole mother like you have kids that are watching you you need to know who you are <laughs> yes um gosh that's true isn't it oh gosh gotta know who you are like you, you f- flipping and flapping about like you can't be having that when you're a mum or you can but you got to make sure you have it under control but yeah my yeah, husband yeah. definitely helps me find has helped me find mm-hmm. myself in a way showing me what I'm good at showing me what he thinks I may like that I may not have thought of before um so yeah, yeah have someone that you can bounce off whether it's a spouse a partner or a best friend um yeah. a parent my mum is the same like my parents obviously have been very influential there too but mm-hmm. have someone you can bounce off that knows you intimately so yeah and that's the thing in it you. create that yeah create those intimate relationships yes. so you can have someone to bounce those things off we had an episode a couple weeks On ago friendship. about friendships yeah we did ha- create those intimate relationships because yet yeah, the times where my self-esteem has been back down or whatever my husband my parents my best friends they were like be like but man this ain't new yeah because they know me so have yeah. people in your life that know you that's an excellent point yeah I think something else that has helped um is to um try new things how do you know this is what I say to my daughter all the time like how do you, know you, don't like how do you yeah how do you know that you don't like it but she doesn't even say don't she says can't instead of don't she always says can't so she goes I can't like it and I'm like Isabel but how do you know that you can't like it <laughs> unless you try things so try new things I'm I all can't. about adventure do you know what I've just signed up to what? um so next week next week I'm going on a conference um okay. so this is like yes it's it's oh, yeah, for a course yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. actually yeah and so I'm in London um and the the conference is at Tottenham Hotspurs and they sent oh, out like the football ground Lane. yeah yeah and so they sent out an email yesterday about um some different activities you can book on to wash there uh-huh. and there's one thing there called like a dare skywalk which is where like you go to the top of the stadium and you yeah. walk around the perimeter of it and then you like abseil sail down <sighs> Try new things, guys. That's all I'm gonna Sorry, say. I keep you don't have to be so <laughs> like me. You don't have to be so adventurous. But yeah, sometimes you know, who knows that you don't like, you know, the adrenaline rush. If you never try an adrenaline rush, who said that you don't like Thai food? If you never try Thai food, like try we like Thai food, don't we? We, we like do food. like Thai food. Yes, we. That's have the been... first meal we had together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was Thai food. <laughs> But um, yeah, I agree with you. Try different things, try new things, have new experiences. Don't be too scared to venture out and try something else. Um, don't be same old, same old, same old. Life is too short to be same old. And there's so many different things to explore that you might find, like we said, that you really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And that be, might, might be part of finding who you are as an individual. So there we go. You might do the Skywalker yeah. Commander and suddenly think, do you know what, I've, I've missed my calling. I need to be um, an adrenaline junkie. Devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah who knows I might do it and be like this is me this is what I'm going to ded- dedicate my life to I doubt that will happen uh, but I think imagine. I'll have a good day I'd have to have I a stiff have talking a to you but um, yeah <laughs> yeah have you got anything else that you do um to find myself mm. I guess sometimes just sit with my own thoughts 
Yeah. Um, you said before about journaling, going out yeah, to journaling. eat by yourself. Exactly, journaling, going out to eat by yourself, just sitting with your own thoughts sometimes. Um, just enjoying your own company because you know crowd out the noise try and get rid of all the extra noise of different things of all the different roles of all the different things that you have to do sit in the silence sometimes and just write and be like even if it's like okay hi i'm here i'm writing this but i don't know what i'm writing i don't know what i'm going to say yeah but yeah just, just you know just spend time on your own be with yourself um that's mm -hmm. really really important um as children you know we grow we we've kind of so it has children sorry as adults we've kind of lost that level of innocence so mm -hmm. life has gotten busy and overcrowded and just overpowering and overwhelming that we don't have the time to spend on our own we don't have the time to take ourselves mm -hmm. out for a meal guys good question have you ever taken yourself out for a meal like i very much enjoy my own company so i will do stuff like mm -hmm. that not necessarily now but when i was perhaps unmarried um i would go here and try this and try that or it's, i'd say for lunch this week at work i'm going to try this place and that place and that place or i'm going to mm -hmm. go get my nails done or i'm going to do this or whatever like guys interesting question have you ever taken yourself to the cinema on your own Oh. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I'd rather watch it in my house on mm -hmm. my own or with someone else because I'm a, I am a social person. But that's a yeah. good question. What have what is it that you have done on your own that you think is beneficial? To yeah, find it you know, he does that all the time. My brother, since he was a teenager, he goes to the cinema by himself all the time. Really, literally, like maybe like once a week, once a month, something. He goes to the cinema by himself. He enjoys it. And Raf, especially after we have started like having kids, he'll go to the cinema by himself as a film that he wants to watch. Wow. Um, but yeah, that's just spend time with yourself. And you know about the journaling. You saying um, there's actually a type of journaling that I've done before, which is like the three minute journal, okay. where in the morning or whenever you got time, you just spend three minutes and you just write for three minutes you just write whatever comes just let out your hand your mind. write whatever yeah yeah so you might start off like i don't know why i'm writing this but today i'm doing this and then suddenly your thoughts go and then all you over. read it back and it's mad. yeah and it can be a bit of discovery of like what's actually on your mind and your brain yeah. like it's kind of dumping those things out um and that's so that's a, good a way idea. to journal I might start if you don't know where that. to start yeah I it's good the three that. minute journal just three minutes put a timer on and just write 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 yeah. um and if you've got an ipad or something i guess it doesn't waste as much paper if you've got like a pen or something like that pen, or yeah. like some people type it but yeah, yeah just type get it, would it be long out for me i just want to write it but yeah, yeah yeah i just write it yeah um but um is that you know, point, you know oh yeah go on no sorry sorry um i wanted to make a point before i forget sometimes finding yourself is scary mm -hmm. sometimes it is scary because you realize that you have had to you have to question a lot of what you already know yeah um and that which which has off which has acted as your security sort of your 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 cushion your safety cushion suddenly gets removed or or changes shape or just you know it becomes overwhelming because you're just like you're questioning all the basic things of who you are so sometimes finding yourself can actually be very scary and not yeah. as fun um or you i think everyone goes through a scary part you know where they find themselves thinking oh my goodness that's yeah. not who i am and you think oh shoot like how's everybody going to receive me how is everyone gonna mm -hmm. think what's everyone going to think of me now that i think this and now that i think that so you know sometimes remember guys i just wanted to tell you that so you know to expect it yeah. <laughs> at some point in your life and it may it may happen multiple times you know that you just it's mm -hmm. such a scary journey because you're questioning a lot of things you're questioning even your morals sometimes and you're yeah. just like wow um always end up in a good place of course um but yeah, yeah it can be scary that's the thing most like i can personally testify like testify to that because um certain things that i thought helped me to like it's who i was i would say things about my career um on this journey of self-discovery and certain things that have happened, I found that how I thought I was going to run my life is so, so different to how I want to. Yeah. Now it doesn't align with who I am. And that means this that plan that I've had too. has been smashed to pieces. So before I thought I was going to be the full-time working mom that spent quality time with my child. That's what I thought it would be. And to have like, no, you know, around the clock childcare, and but now I'm like, no, actually, my priority is actually in the home. 
I didn't think that would happen. Um, I actually want to not just have quality time, but I want quantity. Quantity is so important to me. I want to be there for the, I thought I wouldn't mind not being there for bedtimes, but I want to be there for the bedtimes. I want to be there in the weekends. I want to get them in the morning. I want to be able to take them places. Like I want to be a really present person. But the way in which I thought that my career was going to be wasn't going to allow for that. And so, like I said, things have been smashed out of the water for me. Um, Discovering who I am and what makes me tick. And so, like, last week I resigned from my job whilst I'm returning to leave. Wow. Resigned and I've got to find a new job. The one that fits in how I want to work now. Yeah. And I am scary. I'm so there with you. It's scary. So there with you. I had this conversation literally probably 24 hours ago now um, Mm -hmm. with Daryl, literally about the fact that my life right now is a bit of an open book. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because when you kind of, guys, if you know, I'm sure you get what we're saying. Like when you have a period of downtime, like we've had like Matt leave for the women out there that are mothers and just a, just a downtime in your life where you've just, Mm -hmm. just thought a change was necessary you suddenly think, oh my goodness, like my life is an open book. Whatever is supposed to be written on these pages is going to get written. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know what I'm going to write, but think, basically change. You sense, you sense within a deep part of yourself that change is coming, that something yeah. different is on the horizon, that something needs to change. Mm-hmm. So I even said to my husband, look, I've had two children now. I'm not going back to work full time. It's not going to happen. And if it is full time, it's going to be a compression of hours um, just so I can have that time with the kids and be around my children a lot more and have that Mm downtime where I'm not having to split myself into a million pieces. Um, So, yeah, I'm there with you, hon. Like when I tell you I had this conversation yesterday, it's so interesting. But yeah, yeah, everything changes. It's a great point. It's scary, though. I'm the person and I know you are Cerise as well. We're planners, organized. And so if I tell you, if you asked me five years ago, where you were going to be, but like, in five years, I could have told you I was going to be here because I had a plan. Yeah, I couldn't tell you that I've had this existential crisis right now. I wouldn't be able to tell you that bit, but I would have been able to tell you that, oh yeah, I'll be a GP. I'll be married. I have a house. I have kids. I, I could have told you the plan. Yeah. Five years before that, I could have told you Whatever the plan, the plan of was like, be. yeah, and I could execute it. But now the book, like, you know, things are blank because I, I'm discovering myself and I'm discovering that I want to go in a new direction. Yeah. And you're right, it can be scary. Um, but I encourage you all to do it. I think that's a really good place for us to kind of round off t- Definitely. this episode. What do you think? It's necessary, guys. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's continue the conversation. Um, you can see if you're if you're listening to us, um, then you can watch us. Head over to our YouTube channel. Um, that is So Sis Podcast, and you can see our beautiful faces. We make and an in effort, the comment guys. Section, we make an effort. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> please subscribe and in the comment section let's keep the conversation going definitely and um if you're watching us on youtube don't forget to head over to our podcast um which can be found on most podcast streaming platforms spotify and apple um definitely and on if you do go over to apple make sure you review us as well a five star review please if it's less than this if it's less than five stars don't bother um <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um of course we're on instagram as well where the conversation is happening daily um, and that is so.sis.podcast yep that's it guys that's all we've got for you today but of course like we said let's continue the conversation and we will catch up with you next week yeah bye bye take care guys <laughs>